And I know a lot of you are thinking, don't, please don't turn off because I say that I did drugs or whatever. I'm not telling or advocating them. I got out of it. You know, like I did. It is a crutch. It's because your reality sucks. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to when you're doing it all the time. And I did it all the time. So at the point I was, it was, uh, I had two days off, the Sunday and Monday. And uh, three, four Italian guys came up to me after they saw my show and said, well, you're really funny. I said, thanks. And he goes, do you want to come up to my cottage and perform for me and three of my buddies? And I said, no. <laughs> and he says, why? And I said, because that's weird. <laughs> and then he said, I'll give you $1,000. I said, okay. <laughs> so I went up to this cottage, believe it or not. I'm standing in the cottage beside a bearskin rug. He's standing there in the fireplace, and four guys on a couch, no microphone. Like, it's good to be here at Jimmy's. I don't know. <laughs> so it goes really well. And then it, one in the morning, it rolls around, and this little Italian dude comes up to me and goes, Hey. I said, Hey. He goes, uh, You want to do some acid? I said, Yeah. I'm in the wilderness with four Italians I don't know, and you don't want to be the only one not to do acid at an acid party, right? You also don't want to be the only one to do acid with four Italians in the middle of nowhere at a cottage, which is what happened. I put the acid on my tongue, and the Italians go, all right, well, we're going to go to bed. You ever try to sleep on LSD? Like, it's not like weed. Weed, you're high for 45 minutes. Acid's a 13-hour commitment, right? Like, you can't sleep at all, right? So I'm sitting on the couch just freaking out because it was good acid, too. <laughs> I'm alone, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just freaking out. Three in the morning, and I have to take a pee. Now, to a normal person not on LSD, that's easy, right? But when you're on acid, this is what went through my head. I'll have to pee, but the pee, if I go in the washroom, the dribbling sound will wake up the other cottagers. <laughs> so I should go outside. Very dark at cottages, as we know, right? Walked outside, took seven steps outside, turned around, couldn't see the cottage, now I'm lost. <laughs> I'm on acid in the middle of the wilderness, so I did what anyone else would do. I circled the cottage for about three hours looking for it. <laughs> And then I built a lean-to against a tree because I was going to have to get up early to collect berries. <laughs> Got woken up by si at 6 in the morning. The door to the cottage hit me in the foot. <laughs> I'm still high, and I look up at this guy, and I <laughs> Thank God you found me! <laughs> You want some breakfast, man? I go back in and sit down on the couch. Now, they're having 100 people up, and my ride doesn't come to get me to bring me back into town till 6. I am right in the midst of this acid buzz like you would not believe. So I'm holding on to the couch. I got dark glasses on, and I did what most Canadians do when we panic. Started drinking. <laughs> Started drinking beer like you would not believe. Drank a dozen, but my thought process is, I don't know any of these people, so I'll put the empties around me in a semicircle. <laughs> so if anyone has to talk to me, they'll have to cross the wall of beer. <laughs> Drank 12 beers, okay? It was 6 in the morning when I started, which scared a lot of the cottagers that I cranked out 12 beers. <laughs> Looked at my watch, figured it's about noon, right? 6.30. <laughs> drank 12 beers in 30 minutes. Now I'm wasted. I'm sitting there on the couch just trying to hold on. Now all these people are coming up that I don't know. Walking in, looking at me and going, hello. And I'm like, hey. It's got a little shake to me. This is when it gets weird. An activity lady walks in. Comes in through the door. Activity ladies are women that don't drink, smoke drugs, and think that drunk people need an activity to keep them going. <laughs> Just drink and leave us alone. <laughs> she comes in and goes, who wants to play Pictionary? Nobody wants to play that game. You take it out, I'll stab you in the eye with a little pencil, and I'll time your death. <laughs> then I'll draw it. <laughs> That'll be funny. 
What's that, a rhino? No, it's Julie. I stabbed her in the eye. She's in the kitchen. And now there's like 50 people in the cottage and this guy walks in. Walks by everyone that looks normal and walks up to me. Would you bug a guy sitting in dark glasses inside a cottage with 12 empty beers around him holding on to a couch? You give him a little distance. Walks up to me and he goes, hey. I said, hey. He goes, you want to go water skiing? I drank all these. He goes, come on. I said, no, man, I've never water skied and I'm not doing it. He goes, come on. I said, no. And then he said something that gets every Canadian man just to be stupid, you know. He goes, what are you, a pussy? You better start that boat up. My turn to go skiing. I get up, I walk out of the cottage, walk down to the dock. It takes me about... 30 minutes because I had to sit on every step for a minute and look at the pretty butterfly. <laughs> I got down to the dock. Now I am wrecked. The guy, this is how high I was. I'm standing on the dock like this and the guy throws a life jacket at me and it hits me in the head and falls to the ground and I actually looked at him and I said, hey man, there's no reason to start throwing shit all over the place. <laughs> he goes, no, put it on. All right, so I put it on. And when you're that uh, wasted, right, you have not a clue what you're doing. So, but you're confident. So I put it on, he hit his back to me, and I went, all right, I'm ready. <laughs> and he looks at me, he goes, Jesus. And I'm like, what? So he comes over and unzips it and starts dressing me like I'm a two-year-old getting into a skidoo suit. You know, you got to hold their arms and they wiggle. And I know it looked weird because I heard the neighbors up at the other cottage go, hey, I think the retarded man's going to try it. <laughs> I'm not retarded, I'm a drug addict. <laughs> I get in the water. Now I'm bouncing up and down and I'm laughing, right? I'm kicking my skis. It doesn't even dawn on me what's about to happen, right? <laughs> Never water skied before. I'm just like, hey, this is kind of cool. Look at my long feet. <laughs> the guy in the dock's trying to help me out. He goes, okay, Sean, the key is the guy in the back of the boat. He's your eyes. He's your savior. He'll warn you if you're going to hit a rock. <laughs> With that, I heard. They gunned the boat, right? And I got up. I was absolutely terrible. <laughs> My legs were apart. A lot of guys get up there on their one ski, but I, I was like this, trying to hold on, really wasted. And I remember thinking, maybe it's because I was really drunk or high. Whatever happens, don't let go of this rope. <laughs> That's when we went on what's called a whip. You guys know what that is? A turn? Yeah, I didn't know. I just knew I was ahead of the boat and couldn't figure that out at all. <laughs> How the hell am I pulling you? <laughs> and that's when I lost my left ski, but I didn't let go of the rope, though. I skied on my right ski and my left testicle for about 500 yards. And then I heard the word that'll haunt me forever. Rock! Hit the rock with my right ski, broke it in two, didn't let go of the rope though, skipped across the water six times. And I remember thinking, as I was being pulled face first through the water, the only thing that goes through your mind when you're drunk, you bastards aren't leaving me out in the middle of this lake. <laughs>